Hello everybody, welcome to Portworks Lightboard Sessions. My name is Ryan Walner. Today we're going to be talking about why Portworks. So before we get into any architecture specifics, feature specifics, we're just going to talk about the overall reasons why Portworks is of interest. So if you're somewhere along your container application kind of journey, you're putting your containers into applications, you're creating images, you're deploying Kubernetes, you may be at a point where you start to think about uh, where your data services run. So things like Cassandra, Elasticsearch, MySQL, Postgres, all those things that store data eventually have to uh, run somewhere. Now, you can run them outside of your uh, Kubernetes infrastructure. However, that kind of creates an operational overhead you have specific one-offs for every application. You have specific backup procedures for every type of database. Corvus consolidates that and abstracts that for any data service. And mainly, Corvus solves the stateful container problem. And it does this for all those ones that I just mentioned, such as Elasticsearch, Postgres, and, and the rest of them. And it provides a data mobility and data management at an application-centric uh, uh, focus for uh, all the applications I mentioned. So instead of having backup procedures for MySQL and Cassandra, you can backup, restore, and keep snapshots all in a very similar fashion across your on-prem and cloud infrastructure. Now, we, Inside a single cluster, providing HA for applications is an absolute must. So Portworks does keep replicas in a single cluster and provides high availability if your nodes go down. Uh, however, this works for any infrastructure uh, on-prem or in the cloud. And because we're application-centric and uh, provide mobility and data management, uh, you can move those workloads from Kubernetes cluster to Kubernetes cluster with a few commands, uh, as well as lowering your cost. Now, this is an interesting one because Portworks runs on your application or compute nodes. Now, there's two ways in which Portworks can lower costs for your overall infrastructure. Uh, the first one is because Portworks can run hyper-converged. And what do I mean by that is Portworks runs on the same nodes as your applications. So applications depicted as A in a box here run on the same nodes as Portworks runs itself. Portworks consumes any disk available to that node and creates a virtual volume pool, which we'll dig into detail in further videos. What this does is ultimately reduce your compute overhead uh, and uh, that essentially saves you costs in the long run as you have kind of half the amount of compute nodes you normally need for storage and compute. The other way is Portworks manages these disks for you. So you can tell them which, tell Portworks which one it is, or you can have it deploy uh, and provision disks for you if you're in AWS or Google Cloud, for instance. Now, the benefit is applications typically use their own disk. And in a large scale environment, you'd have thousands of disks, thousands of applications, whereas Portworks can abstract that and you can manage the, uh, the amount of storage and cluster capacity management at the Portworks level. And each application gets its own little or big virtual volume associated with it that's uh, pulled from this pool. Now, Portworks can have less disks and scale out when, it's, when you need to add disks by adding a disk or adding a node with a disk. This ultimately reduces the overall management operation cost as well as a per disk cost uh, if you're in uh, cloud-based resources or on-prem. So if you're on your journey to thinking about stateful applications like databases or even Jenkins, CI pipelines, uh, definitely take a look at Portworks uh, and follow up with 
some of the rest of the videos that we'll be digging into specific features like PXDR, encrypted volumes, uh, shared volumes, uh, if you're interested. Thanks for watching. Until next time.